Hey, let me cheer. How are you doing? How was your day today? <clears throat> hey, everybody. How was your day today? I pray your day was good. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Hey, sister. How you doing? Good. Good, good, good. Good. That's what we like to hear. Hey, sister, how you doing? How was your day today? Hey, Mama Joyce, how are you doing today? How was your day? I'm I don't even care. It was okay. It was good. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Hey, Chandra, how are you doing, sister? How's, uh, um, how's, how's everything going? Hey, Shasta, Shasta. I just sent her a video, and I don't know if y'all have seen it yet, and now it's in my head, and I've been walking around when I had to get ready for Periscope, right? Instead of being deep before God, I was like, boom, shakalaka, laka, God is good. Boom, shakalaka, laka, God is good. But anyway, hey, Nidra. Hey, we missed you too. I'm so glad you're on. How have you been doing? How have you been doing? Yeah, I don't know if y'all seen that, but now it's stuck in my head, and... I'm like, boom, shaka, laka, laka, God is good. 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 You know, that's why you got to be real careful when you do stuff in public because everybody got their phones out. Everybody got their phones out. Like, you know, that's why I be like lip syncing. They be like, man, she can sing. Amen. Amen. We will. We will. Um, but that, it just really was, it's in my head. I need to get that out of my head. So we're going to be in, um, okay. 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 We're going to, we're going to, we'll pray for him when we get to, um, in the end when we pray. Okay. Hey, Nico, how are you doing? We love you. Um, we're going to be in Nehemiah chapter one. We're not going to be on like super, super long. I remember who he is. Um, I sent it to, I'll send it to you. Y'all know my jokes. Like, hey, Sharon, how are you? Y'all know my jokes be off the chain. Yes, Will, Will. We're, let's do the word first. Let's see what the word is. I love you, sister. Thank you for, for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. Um, and, and sifting through all of our antics. <laughs> um, hey, Megan. Boom, shaka, laka, laka. God is good. Shas is going to send you a, um, she's going to send you a video. Yes, she is. She's going to send you a video. All right, does anybody have any, um, pr uh, not prayer requests, does anybody have any song requests? Because if not, y'all know what I'm going to do. I'm going to find me a song and hit repeat. All right, I found one. <laughs> um, where's the song at? Okay, Rose, okay, okay, give me one second, give me one second, okay. Um, let me find a song. So I pray everybody's day was good. Um... I pray everybody's day was good. Um, and so today we're going to be in Nehemiah. Yeah, now hear the song, don't y'all? We're going to be in um, Nehemiah chapter one. We're not going to be on super long today. Um, actually, tomorrow we may be on a little bit late. I'm going to try to make it back in time. Um, but we may, I may not make it back in time because of um, on time by seven o'clock because of traffic. And I don't know, tomorrow may, may have to be the last day because I have some things I have to do before my son gets back. And my daughter is, hey, Chastity, she's moving. We gotta, she's got to buy furniture and stuff to move into her apartment. So I got a lot of kind of stuff I got to do. Um, but we'll be on tomorrow. So I think tomorrow we're going to do dreams. So if you have a dream, go ahead and send it. If not, then we'll just do the regular. I pray you had a good day, Chastity. We're going to go ahead and pray for Nico. Um, even though, Rose, I know that you have been laying hands on him and praying for him. Amen. Amen. So I'm not, we're not going to pray anything di different. Um, all right. We love you, sister. We're not praying anything different than what the Lord has led you to pray. We're just agreeing with you. Amen. 
And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this young man, Nico. We thank you, God, for him even being in Rose's house. We lift him up before you, Father, and we just thank you that this is going to be a good four weeks or six weeks, however long he's in this house. We thank you, God, for mighty God encounters the whole time that he is in London. We thank you, God, that he shall crash into you everywhere he turns, that he shall find the Lord on every street corner. He shall find the Lord in every class, every question that Nico has before you. We thank you, God, that you yourself will answer Nico. We thank you, God, that this young life, this young life is before you and he is in your hands and that you are speaking to him and you are wooing him and you are calling him into a deep place with you and that this will last all the days of his life. And so, Father, we thank you that he will be transformed by your power and your presence when he goes home and that he is going to understand the wisdom of God and the deep things of God. And so, God, we thank you that his age means nothing to you. We thank you, God, that in these encounters, he will learn to worship his way. He will learn to pray and prayer is just communion. And so God, we thank you that during this time he will begin to commune. He will commune with you and out of the communing with you, communication will come. Communing with you, the words will come. Communing with you, come on guys, the verbiage will come. And so Father, we just bless you for Nico. And, and, and for every young boy from the ages of 12 to 17, we just thank you, God, for these lives. We thank you that our sons and our nephews and our grandchildren are crashing into you, Father. We thank you that everywhere they turn, they see the Lord. They are confronted with the things of God. May their appetite not be turned towards the things of the world, but may their appetites be turned towards the things of heaven. Give them an appetite, God, for you. We're praying. We're praying for our sons. We're praying for our boys. We're praying for our community in the name of Jesus. Let boys, young men, find the Lord at a young age. May the, the wooing of God outweigh and outlast the wooing of the streets, the wooing of gangs, the wooing of drugs, the wooing of sex, Father. But may the holiness and the wonderfulness and the glory of you encapsulate these boys, encapsulate these young, these young men at a young age. And so, Father, that's what we pray over Nico and every young life that is on this scope and represented on the scope tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we love you, Nico. We love you and good night. Have a good day tomorrow. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be in Nehemiah chapter one. Let me know when you get there. <clears throat> hey, sister. How have you been doing? Hey, DJ. How you been? We were waiting on you, DJ. We were talking about you. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Um, yeah. So let me know when you get to um, Nehemiah chapter one. Yeah, no problem. Good. Good. We're, um, I, I want to give you some verbiage to, um, amen for finals week. I want to give, good, good. Thank you for asking. I want to give you some verbiage to, to pray. Um, and when we pray, not asking certain questions, but when we pray, she didn't, she going in, I'm about to start going in with her. Um, when we pray certain verbiage, it's going to unleash and unlock certain mindsets and perceptions that unleash and unlock uh, dimensions of our authority, if that makes sense. Amen. Amen. We love you, Julius. We love you, man. We love you, sir. He's our 11-year-old um, son. Um, and so I just kind of want to put this kind of in your lap in the, you know, best week ever hashtag and living on this side of breakthrough. Chapter one, chapter one. So we, we've kind of gone through this before, but we're going to come, we're going to go through it. Um, amen. Amen, Nico. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. We're praying for you and we love you. All right. So uh, Nehemiah chapter one, we're introduced to Nehemiah. He's the cupbearer. His brother, his actual brother, we're already in it, guys. His actual brother comes to him and Nehemiah inquires about the state of his brethren, the state of those who had, as the verbiage the Bible uses, those who had escaped captivity. I'm in verse two. And I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped 
which were left of the captivity and concerning Hashantel and concerning Jerusalem. All right, in verse three, they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The word affliction, because I want you to pray, the word affliction is adversity, affliction, calamity, distress. I want you to, hey sister, I want you to circle this. Evil favoredness. Evil favoredness. Evil favoredness. Well, every time we pray for favor, this is just a side note. And every time you pray, um, I'm sorry. Uh, somebody's texting me about my daughter's furniture. Um, everybody, when you're praying for people and when you're praying over yourself, this is just a key because we understand that we're living on the other side of breakthrough and the enemy is going to try to come at you very subtle, very subtle. And so just to make sure you're going to close the doors, make sure when you're praying, you're praying for the, for the favor of God. The favor of God first and the favor of God is going to release every other type of favor that's inside of the favor of God that God wants you to have. Does that make sense? Because if I listen to this, just listen to the other side of the coin. If I don't like you and I begin to bring warfare against you in the workplace, whatever, at the bus stop, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. It is evil favor. Bullying is evil favor. I picked you. That's what favor is. I pick you over everybody else to bully. I pick you over everybody else to pick on. I pick you over everybody else to bring uh, to, uh, evil uh, tidings to. That's evil favor, if that makes sense. And so, I mean, Anise, is it necessary to specify? Why not? That's all I'm saying. In this season, on the other side of breakthrough, why not specify? Why not specify, if that makes sense, right? And so evil favoredness, great grief, heaviness, ill favor, mischievousness, misery, noisome, sore, sorrow, wretchedness. All right. So the remnant, so the remnant that are left in captivity in the province are in great ill favor, evil favor and reproach. <laughs> reproach. So they have evil, great affliction, and they have disgrace, rebuke, and shame. Disgrace, rebuke, and shame. Re disgrace, rebuke, and shame. But here it is. This is the remnant. I need y'all to think this through. I need y'all to write this down. So if you draw diagrams, I need you to draw a, you know, write the word remnant, draw a circle around it. But what they're experiencing is ill favor evil favor, rebuke, shame, and ill grace. This is what the remnant, those who escape, this is what they are dealing with when Nehemiah inquired, how are things going? Right? How are things going? And they said, the wall of Jerusalem also was break, broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire. We talked about this before. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days I fasted and I prayed before the God of heaven. Before the God of heaven is where I directed my fasting is where I, and where I directed my prayer before the God of heaven. Verse five. And I said, I beseech thee. I need you to circle this whole verse because he's praying. I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy. Notice what side of God he's imploring to. Notice what side of God he's talking to, what side of his character God he's talking to. He's talking to the side of his character, the God of covenant and the God of mercy, because the, you kept the remnant because of covenant. Now, God, I need you to remember covenant and I need you to give us mercy because the remnant is experiencing ill favor, evil favor and shame. The people called by your name, the people that you let get away. Now they're at a place where they don't have, they're experiencing uh, ill favor, evil favor, and they, uh, they have no defenses. They're sitting ducks. They have no hope. Oh, God of covenant. Oh, God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Uh, for them that love him and observe his commandments. Verse six, and just circle this because he's still praying. Let your ear now be attentive and your eyes open that thou may hear the prayer of your servant and the prayer of the servants. Am I getting ahead of myself? I may be. 
which I pray before thee now, day and night for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which have sinned against thee both. I and my father's house have sinned. So he doesn't make any disconnection between him and the house of Israel. Y'all already know that. And then verse 7, he talks about what they've done, that they have not kept the statutes, they have not kept the judgment, they have not done what Moses told them that God told the people of Israel that they were supposed to do. We ain't did none of that. Verse 8, remember I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy, mo thy servant Moses saying, if you transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. I need you to circle that. If you transgress, I will scatter you. I need you to circle the word scatter. I need you to circle the word scatter. B verse 9, you just circle it. But if you turn unto me, this is God speaking. He's saying to him, remember that you said, verse 9, but if you turn unto me, keep my commandments, do my commandments, turn to me, keep my commandments, and do my commandments, though there were you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather you from hence, and will bring you into the place that I have chosen to set my name there. I've chosen to set my name there. I'm going to bring you from all the uttermost parts that you've been scattered, O oh remnant. This is what God said. And Nehemiah is reminding him because Nehemiah wants mercy. So he's praying into the mercy side of the character of God. So he's saying, Jehovah, O oh merciful one. There's probably a Hebrew name for mercy for God. I don't know it. And so he's saying, oh God, we know you to be merciful. And this is what you said, that if we would turn to you, if we would remember your commandment and if we would do them, if we would keep them and do them, you said that you would take us from the place that we've been scattered and you will bring them to the place that I put my name on. If my people who are called by my name and I'll bring you to a place that I put my name on. If that makes sense. Amen. Now verse down, now drop down to verse 11. Oh Lord, I beseech thee. Let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants. And you just circle that. Now, O Lord, I beseech thee, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayers of your servants who desire to fear thy name. Let me rock back and forth. Hear us, O God, who desire to fear your name. He didn't say who are fearing your name, who are, he said, who desire to fear your name and prosper. I pray thee thy servant this day and grant him mercy in the sight of man for I was the king's cup bearer. All right. So dear Nehemiah's, this is what the Lord is saying as we're living on the other side of breakthrough. This is the season. If you're taking notes, I didn't say take notes, but I don't know. Maybe it was implied. I don't know. This is the season where why you had to go through whatever breakthrough you went through. This is the season where you find out the why. And the why is always dealing with the larger clan, the larger context, the larger community. God will call you out early on, put you in to thank you. Thank you. God will put you. I don't know how to pronounce that, but I'm going to go and find it. God will put you into um, some situations and he will get you. Come on. Nehemiah, though he was, you know, he's the cupbearer. He's rose in the ranks. He was born into captivity. He has rose in the ranks and now he's cupbearer to the king. So he's near the person. Come on, guys. He's near the person with the resources while the remnant is out there. They are free. They are free, but they have no resources. They are free, but they have no hope. They are free, but they don't know which way to turn. They are free, but they have no choices. They are free, but the, all they have is fear. And so sometimes God will take you out, put you back in so that he can use you, hey man of God, for the people who got out who would be called the remnant. A lot of times we bless God that we're part of the remnant, we're part of the remnant, we're part of the remnant. Oh God, raise up the remnant. But what happens when the remnant is in need of a deliverer? What happens when the remnant is in need 
of the person who has the anointing and the authority, come on guys, to come to the remnant, organize the remnant, uh, cause the remnant to rally the troops, come on, where they want to build. We cannot build where there is no hope. Where there is no hope, a people will not build. Where there is no hope, a people will not march. Where there is no hope, a people will not pray. There, even though we may be free, we're not free from the bondage of disappointment. We're not free from the bondage of shame. Even though we are the remnant, even though we are the ones that were left, we are still in bondage at some, at some part, if this is making sense. And so as we find ourselves on the other side of breakthrough, now we are getting ready to come into what God has really called us to do and what God has really called for us to do and what God has called for us to do with whom he has called us to do it with. So now some things are getting ready to make sense. Hey, sister, if this is making sense. Some things are getting ready to make sense. They, they, mark this day on your calendar. This is the day where you're getting ready to um, find some people you haven't seen in a long time. And out of your mouth is going to come a question. And the answer to this question is going to lay heavy on your heart. The answer to this question is going to cause you to pray. The answer to this question is going to cause you to fast because this is going to be an answer that only God can answer. And when you begin to pray this uh, uh, issue before God, you're going to know that you are also a part of the answer. You are not only carrying uh, materials to build a wall, but you're also carrying the material to build hope. You're also carrying the material to build deliverance. You're also carrying the material to build wisdom. God is calling you. God is causing you. This is a mature word. He is calling you and he is causing you to go among the people who have not yet broken free, broken free, even though they think they're free. Even though they have the signs of freedom. If there's no hope, if there's no building, if there's no forward traction, then there is no freedom, right? Where the kingdom of God is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. Where the domain of God is, there is liberty. And so now you have broken out and you have broken free. Come on, guys. And now it's you're getting ready to understand why am I here where I'm here, where I am here at? Why am I here with whom I am here with? Why do I have favor with these particular particular people. Why did I end up in this particular zip code? Why am I with this particular church? What is going on? The answers are getting ready to come. And now your, your authority is getting ready to be activated in full bloom as you go forth. Because this is about the people. God is saying, I'm going to cause you to pray to me, God of the covenant and God of mercy. And I'm going to hear the prayer of the person I put the prayer inside of. And so tonight, as we are living on the other side of breakthrough, I am activating the prayer at, that God has put on the inside of you to pray at this particular time. Anise, does that really make sense? Yes. Inside of us, in order for the answers to be unlocked, the prayers have to be unlocked as well. God deposited on the inside of you prayers. That you will pray at certain junctures. God put on the inside of you prayers and things that you will decree and things that you will lift up before him that must be unlocked and that must be activated. Hallelujah. And God's going to give you a charge. And with that charge, come here, Nehemiah. Nehemiah began to pray. Do y'all see this? Nehemiah began to pray. And then in the end, he began to pray for favor. And he prayed courageously. He said, let this king favor me because I need to go do this. This is not something. So for, um, I don't know if Adina is still on. Uh, she lives in California. There is a lot of things that are breaking out in California. And so the father is saying, this is not a season where I'm going to call you to a place of prayer. But this is also a season that when you said, I've said this before, when you were praying it, you're also challenging me. You're saying to God, mantle me with courage because I understand I must go. 
Do not just give me the answer, but activate me as the answer. Give me the wisdom so that we can build the answer. Give me the wisdom and the courage so I can rally the troops so that we will move forward in the answer. If this is making sense. And so I'm so excited for you because now for those of you guys who have, you know, you were on the other side of breakthrough and you were just like, I don't really know like what my purpose is. You know what I'm saying? And I know I've got like a really big purpose and you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, God, what's my purpose and what I'm supposed to be doing, but I don't really want to pray like God, what's my purpose? God is saying that you're getting ready to run smack, smack dab into the purpose. And when you when you run into it, you're going to understand that you've got the tools for building that you've got the sound for preaching and proclaiming the heart of God and the domain of God for a people who've lost hope, for a people who've lost courage. Here's the thing. Do you see what Nehemiah prayed? I love this. This is just, I'm so excited. Nehemiah is like, listen to me, God. He's like, Attune, uh, uh, put your ear towards me. Uh, position your ear towards me and others like me who desire. Let me rock back and forth. Who desire. Right? One can set a thousand to flight. We need to remember that. God said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves. And the father was saying that every time you see that, every time that that comes back into your remember, he's saying, I'm talking to you. He's saying to you, you are enough. If you, you are my people, if you would just turn, if you would humble yourself, but if you would take on the burden of the people, and when you turn, everybody turns with you. When you humble yourself, everybody humbles themselves with you. When you cry out, everybody cries out because one can set a thousand to flight and two can set 10,000 to flight. And so the father is saying, we need to stop looking for numbers. God is saying, we need to quit looking for big numbers. God is saying, we don't need a big group. God is saying, I, I, I know one man, Nehemiah, come on. One man begin to rally the troops. One man begin to encourage the troops. One man begin to get the building moving. And God is saying, so it is for you. And so the father is saying, he's cautioning us tonight. If you hear the bell of caution, he's saying, you're getting ready to run into your purpose. You're getting ready to understand why I took you out and brought you back in and took you out. You're getting ready to understand why you were born into a family of shame. Come here, Nehemiah. He was born into a people. The Bible says that was the remnant was experiencing shame. He's a part of that people. Even though he may be the king's cupbearer, he bears their lineage. He bears their lineage. And so here's the thing. You you may have understood. I, I've been asking, why this? Why didn't I have another start? Why did it have to go this way? Why did these people have to be? And the father is saying, you don't understand, but you're getting ready to understand. And when you understand this affliction that these people have is going to cause you to afflict your soul in the place of prayer and fasting. And it's getting ready to unlock the right prayer at the right time to unleash the sound of dominion and kingdom and you're getting ready to push a people I, I know sometimes we look at ourselves and we think oh like little old me I'm just going to write my book I'm going to run my business I'm going to lead people to Jesus and God is saying oh no over you you don't understand that when the people read the words on the pages of your book they're going to build you don't understand that when people come in contact with your business they're getting ready to build you don't understand that you have on you the sound of Nehemiah Meyer and the sound of Esther. You don't understand. Come here, Esther. Esther, she said three days. Everybody, three days. She said three days. Everybody did three days. Everybody fasted. Come on. And so everybody, ever, she rallied the troops. They were down. They were like, oh my gosh, here it is. We finna, we finna, we finna. And Mordecai's like, look, Esther, you're the one. You're the one. And so she said, okay, if I'm the one, then we're all going. If I'm the one, we're getting ready to rally the troops. And so just don't think it's not strange that when you open your mouth, people hear the command to fast. When you open your mouth, you're calling it. It's a clarion call for people to prayer. You're getting ready to see changes in your region because you're getting ready to hear the sound of prayer unlocked. You're getting ready to see the sound of prayer unveiled. Hallelujah. And so I know we've only been on like 30 minutes and I'm so super excited. But tonight I just want to unlock that sound of the prayer that God put on the inside of you for a time such as this. If God is an all knowing God, then we have to understand if he put on the inside of us everything that we would ever need, then he put on the inside of us every prayer that we would ever pray. Inside of you already is every prayer. That you will ever pray. He's, he deposited it. And he says that scriptural. 
I don't know how I ought to pray. We don't know how we, why do some things bother you that don't bother me? Why do some things bother me that don't bother you? Because he's loaded us. He's loaded us. And one of the benefits that he's loaded us with is prayers that he is, he is ready to release the solution to. Prayers that unlock him. Prayers that unlock, if this is making sense. Hallelujah. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just bless you tonight. I thank you, God, for every Nehemiah, for every Esther. I thank you, God, for every person who, who has on them the, 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 the igniting power, the people who are holding the stick of dynamite and the match. I thank you, God, that this is a season on this side of breakthrough where they will hold the dynamite, Father, and you will strike the match. I thank you, Father, that you are causing people to run smack dab into your heart. I'm not going to pray for your purpose because God is going to unveil and reveal the purpose to you in this season for this season. And so, Father, I thank you that anything that would try to disrupt, anything that would try to come against, anything that would try to hinder the courage for us to pray, anything that would cause us to not pray or to overlook what we're supposed to be looking upon. In the place of prayer, in the place of fasting, thank you, Father, that you give your people, you give us an eye to see. And that when we pray, we are not praying uh, separated from a people, but we lump ourselves in the group. We say, oh God, forgive us, for we have sinned against you. We have not kept your statutes. Oh God, my house and my father's house has sinned against you. Hallelujah. And so God, thank you that in this season, there will not be a struggle to pray. I bind in the name of Jesus and with the blood of Jesus, the struggle for the words to come out. I thank you that the muzzle is off of the intercessor. I thank you that the muzzle is off of the builder. I thank you that the muzzle is off of the governor. That's what Nehemiah was. He was intercessor. Come on, guys. He was builder and he was governor. And so, Father, we thank you for every cupbearer. We thank you, God, for every position where it looks like we are subpar. God, even though that's a position in terms of everybody else, but God, we're in a position that is underneath or we're positioned around people who don't necessarily like us. Thank you, God, that this is the season of unleashing and unveiling. And we're getting ready to see that the people around us that don't like us, the people around us that don't necessarily understand us, they're getting ready to favor us as we begin to unlock the sound of the domain of God in the earth. Gone is the day where we just pray that kingdom come, thine will be done. But in this season, when we decree and we, we declare it, wisdom comes. And so when we say thy kingdom come, thine will be done, it will look and it will feel like a certain uh, type of positioning and sentencing. It will be a, a particular sentence and inside of that sentence, and the, you, you guys understand that when we speak, even though you cannot hear it, there is an echo. Every time words are speaking because of vibration, right, there is an echo. If, if, if I didn't have, you know, uh, furniture in here, you will be able to hear the echo a little bit better. But because there's something in here that is soundproofing the air, you cannot hear the echo as much. But it doesn't mean that the echo is not there. And so what does that mean? It means inside of words, there is an echo behind it. And so when Shasta begins to release, come on, guys. When Shasta begins to release the, the, the demands and the commands of God over her job, the echo is saying, thine kingdom come, thine kingdom come. When Joyce begins to release the sound that says, oh God, you know, um, give me witty ideas so that we can go and we can bring, you know, uh, uh, this, this, and this to such, such, and such. Behind it in the echo is thine kingdom come. Are y'all seeing this? And so we're not going to just pray thine kingdom come, thine will be done, but we will pray it with such a detail. And in the echo, it will say thine kingdom come, thine will be done. It's not going to be posed as a question, but it will be posed as a decree. It will be posed as a command. And so when we say a thing, the details, when we decree a thing, it's going to be the echo is going to say the kingdom is coming. The will is being done. The kingdom is coming. The will is being done. When we decide a thing, which is decree a thing, the Bible says that it will be established. And so the Bible says, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. Whatsoever you bind and whatsoever you loose shall be bound and loose. And so when, when Joyce says something behind it, the establishment of the word. 
the establishment of the, de the decree is saying, this is kingdom. This is kingdom. This is the will of God. This is the kingdom of God. And this is the will of God. And so gone is the day where we say, oh God. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done because we don't understand what it is. God is going to cause you to pray. He's going to cause you to open your mouth and he's going to cause the sound that he deposited to come out. And it's going to activate and it's going to be very detailed and it's going to come with it wisdom. Here's the thing. Nehemiah was the cupbearer. Nehemiah was smart. Nehemiah knew things, but he didn't necessarily know how to build a wall. Nehemiah was smart. Nehemiah was cool. Nehemiah was the cupbearer, but he didn't necessarily know how to rally the troops. And so when he prayed, oh God, favor me with the king, everything that uh, is attached to the king, everything that's attached to the king's region, I needed to favor me. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? And so here it is. When we pray something, the wisdom is getting ready to mantle you. The knowledge is getting ready to mantle you. And so a lot of times we shrink back from praying something because we don't feel like we're qualified. What qualified Nehemiah to build a wall? Surely it was because he had an engineering degree. What qualified him to stand up against the elders of Israel when they weren't doing right. Surely it was because he was in exile with them. Surely it was because, right? No, he was a cupbearer. What qualified him? How did he know when he first came up to the wall not to talk to anybody, just to walk around and observe it? As to not draw attention to himself so he could survey what was really going on. How did he know what to, what to lay out before God when Tobiah and Sambalah, hey sister, came against him? He was the cupbearer. He was the cupbearer. Yes, mama, fellowship with the father. But we have to understand this, that we're getting ready to come into what, you, what your name, a word, means to God. Your purpose before him. Yep. And so when we pray these things, these prayers unlocked, when you find yourself weeping, isn't that what the Bible said? His brother, they told him what happened. He began to weep. This is a season where you're going to find yourself weeping and you're not going to know why. You're going to look at something on Facebook and you're just going to begin to weep. And if the weeping begins, you're going to hear the sound of the lock turning. The weeping is going to wet the locks. The weeping is going to be oil on the locks. This is going to be a season where you go into the workplace and you hear some stories and you begin to weep. You just begin to weep and you just begin and it causes you to begin to fast and it causes you to begin to ask a certain set of questions that you've never asked before. This is the season. Yes, this is the season. This is the season. And so, Father, I thank you for this place. I thank you for this purposeful place on this side of breakthrough. On this side of breakthrough, hey. I thank you, Father, that the sound, here's the thing. Not only when we're saying, I'm weeping, I'm weeping, amen. But now it's time to, with that weeping, to understand that the weeping is a type of prayer. And to, to press into it with fasting and to press into it with our questions as Nehemiah did. When we see ourselves praying generationally, when we see ourselves praying um, regionally, now we know that we're tapping into the vein of God. We're tapping into the purposes of God and whatever God is releasing upon you, whatever God is laying upon you to do, he's putting on you the weight of glory. Not just to pray, but to do the work. So this is a season where we will pray, but we will do the work. Hey, man of God, you will build a wall. You will build a wall. You will bring a people deliverance. You will. Come on, Esther. You will risk your life. Come on, Esther. You will risk your everything. Come on, Esther. This is the season where you will ransom it. You will ransom your life. 
for the purposes of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, Father, I just thank you for these, your builders. Yeah. For these, your builders. I thank you, Father, for where they've been. And even though their, their beginning may have been small and people may think small things about them, that they've got such a great, huge, mighty mandate. And they're more than well able to rise to the occasion and do the work. And so, Father, yes, for every, party that, for every person that's saying yes, for every person that's like, yeah, for every person that's like, let's do this, for every person that's like, okay, God, I understand it's not about me anymore. It's not about my business. It's not about my family. It's not about me, 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 but it's all about you, you, you. And as you begin to give them the heartbeat of Jesus and they, they are moved, <laughs> moved. Every, the Bible says that Jesus was moved with compassion and he did something. Jesus was moved with compassion. Jesus was always doing something. Jesus was never um, uh, distanced from what was going on. He went amongst the people and he did something. And so, Father, I thank you that that is inside of your people. And I thank you that that's activated. I thank you that the compassion to move, the compassion to build, the compassion. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, that this is a season where in every state walls are getting ready to be built. In every region, in every school, walls are getting ready to be built. In every country, walls are getting ready to be built because you are calling the Nehemiahs, you are calling the Esthers. This is the season. I thank you, Father, that we have ransomed our life. We've ransomed our life for the kingdom, for the glory, for you, for your namesake. And so right now in your presence, all 24 of us, we let it all go. We let, we let go of every thought of inadequacy. We let go of every thought of not having enough. We let go of every thought of my, I'm small, my name is small, my situation is small, I ain't got it. We, we let that go in your presence. That will not be an idol. Did y'all catch that? When I sacrifice the will of God for me, it becomes an idol. When I say, God, I won't go because blah, 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 the blah, blah, blah becomes an idol because you, exa you exalted the blah, blah, blah over God. This is not going to be a season of idols. God, if you said to do it, and then God, we, your people are saying to you, we will do it. We rely on your strength. We lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, we acknowledge you, even in the place of prayer, because God, we want these God-sized prayers to be unlocked. There are no idols. We do not exalt ourselves. We do not look at ourselves over looking at you. We do not hear ourselves over hearing you. We will not exalt idols of self, of precepts. We will not be talked out of. And so even if, you know, you call your mama and you tell her what you're getting ready to do and your mama says you can't do it. And if you don't do it because your mama said you can't do it, then you just put your mom in the place of God. You will not exalt people and the voice of people over the voice of God, not this season. And so, Father, I thank you for mentally these your people to do big size, king size work. And this will be our worship. This is our worship as we rally the troops, as we sacrifice, as we do what we're supposed to do. This will be our work. Hallelujah. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Yep, come on, repent of it. Fear. Do y'all see this? He's not giving us a spirit of fear. But every time I bow to fear, y'all see that? I bow to fear. I acknowledge fear. I exalt fear. I default to fear. I Y'all see that? It's an idol. And then what happens is in the courtroom of heaven, we are accused of idol, of idolatry. Right? We think, I ain't got no idols. I ain't bowing down and worshiping anything. But if you put something over God, it's an idol. If you listen to something over God, it has become an idol. And so just even right now, God, all 25 of us, we just, yep, whatever it is, just, just put it in. Just, just put it in. Whatever it is, just put it in. We go into the courtroom of heaven right now, all 26 of us. We throw ourselves at the mercy of the court. And we repent. For every accusation of idolatry, we plead the blood of Jesus. Only Jesus can cause us to be free and clear of these charges. We believe 
And we're asking and we're imploring you, oh great judge, that you will wipe the slate clean. And not just for us, but our whole families. For procrastination has been a lineage thing. Where opinions have been a lineage thing. Where worry has been a lineage thing. Where self-doubt and no self-efficacy has been a lineage thing. Where timidity and fear have been, and, and our job has been a, 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 a lineage thing where it's been handed down to us. The spirit of lack, procrastination and doubt, self-sabotage. Where it has been a lineage thing, we bring our whole lineage to you in the courtroom of heaven. And we say to you, the blood is the only thing that can release us from these charges. We want to do your will, oh God. Food issues, we want to do your will. And really, it's not necessarily food issues, women of God. It's comfort. It's fear. It's escapism. Right? Right? And so, Father, we say every time for every charge against us for idolatry, we repent. We repent. Unforgiveness, I really didn't see that. But unforgiveness. Well, we couldn't move forward because so-and-so was in the next position. And we don't want nothing to do with so-and-so. We don't want to be around so-and-so. We've forgiven them, but we don't want to do have anything to really do with so-and-so. We don't want to be around them. Unforgiveness has become an idol. And so now, Father, we thank you for a new set order in the homes of your people that there we're overthrowing, we're overthrowing every seat of idolatry in the homes of your people. We're overthrowing every seat of a sound that wants to outweigh and outlast the sound of God, the sound of kingdom, and the sound of your domain in our homes, in our lineage, in our uh, relationships. We repent. And we thank you that everything is overthrown. We see you high and lifted up. And so, Father, thank you that for these 23 people, that tonight the, the slate is wiped clean. We shall have no other God before you. And so, God, our weeping now is not for us anymore. Our weeping is for the crop of heaven. Our weeping is for the harvest of heaven. Our weeping are weeping, are weeping. And after we get finished weeping and after we get finished fasting, we will wipe our eyes, we will wash our face and we will begin to build. And so Father, I'm asking you to favor your favor on these, your people that you've called to build, that you've called to go out into this earth and to bring people to you in droves however you've called them to do it. That, that desire be activated in all of us, in all of us. That when we see injustice, we understand that we work for, we worship the God of all justice. Oh God, may the voices of these your people always have your ear. Let there not be any accusations that keep your ear from not being in the direction of your people. And so God, thank you for this other side of breakthrough and the maturity and the mantling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so for every need that's on here, for every need, for every need that's on here. When I'm talking about need, I'm not talking about just, I got a light bill due. But every need of understanding, every need for clarity, every need for concentration, 
every need for deeper understanding, every need that's on here. I thank you, God, that because of this prayer and us going into the courtroom of heaven, that, God, the slate has been wiped clean. Hallelujah. The, the, the slate has been wiped clean. And I just believe that there is a release from heaven now of need being met and the thought met. And the Father says, I have supplied all of your need, not needs, need. According to my riches in glory by Christ. And so, Father, I thank you for your riches in glory through Christ Jesus. I thank you, God, that these, your people, through Christ Jesus, are assessing, accessing your riches and glory that supplies their need. And it's funny, God, that you don't say needs, you say need. So before you, it's really just one need, and that need is God. Wherever there is insufficiency, God is the sufficiency. And so there's just one need, God. And so I thank you, Father, that tonight, through Jesus, the riches in glory being accessed to fulfill the need we have access to. In the hand of God, there can be many things. You see this? So I have, I have a pen and I have a phone and I have a paper towel and I have something and I have another pen and I have a little book and I have some posty notes and I have a piece of paper. Only God's hand is like got the whole world in it big. I will supply all of your need according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Because of Jesus, I have access to the riches and glory that will supply my need, which I understand God has. So I have one need, and that is God. And now I have access to the riches and glory and so even though we all, we all have one need, him, so all of us now are before God. And so Shasta's need, Shasta's need is different from my perceived need, like in the physical. So the father hands her this. He hands me this. He hands Joyce this. He gives, come on guys, uh, Megan this. Are y'all seeing this? It all came from one source. It all came from one place. Him. One need. Him. Through Jesus. Through Christ. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you believe on me, you believe on the Father. If you have me, you have the Father. Through Christ. One need, all of us, supplied. So even though everybody's need may be a little bit different, by faith, we praise that as of tonight, we understand that through Jesus, riches and glory have supplied the need as we access not the stuff, but the person of God. And so, Father, I thank you for the accessing, the person, the person, the person of the Father. Riches in glory have supplied your need. 
so even though if I was to ask you what all of your prayer requests and what all of your needs are and blah, 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 you may give me a whole long list. He has supplied your need. Your need. So whenever you feel that list is getting bigger and bigger and things are just all over the place and things are moving around, wait a minute. And my God has supplied my need. Christ, through Christ, I have access to riches and glory. And the riches and glory is Him. It's Him. It's Him. When I have him, I have the wisdom. When I have him, I have the strategy. When I have him, I have the favor. When I have him, y'all see this? I have the word. When I have him, I have the decree. When I have him, I have the answer. When I have him, I have the joy. When I have him, I have the fullness. And there's only one way to get to him. Through Jesus. Mature word for a mature intercessor. My need is God. My need is supplied in who he is. So we talked about on Monday, your view of God, your view of God, your view of I never need stuff over him. He's got all my stuff. He arranges all my stuff. He knows me inside and out. So the more I get him, the more I get him, the more I get it. And so Father, thank you that all of the need the need, the need is supplied. And for those of you guys who are praying for people, take them into the courtroom of heaven in prayer. Ask the, in, in the courtroom, begin to see what accusations are against them and repent for them. And repent as them. All of your need has been supplied. Yep, all of your need has been supplied. And God is pouring favor upon the favor that he's favored you with. To do his will. He's pouring favor upon the favor that he's favored you with to do his will. And so even right now, I see the rearranging. Some people on here are gonna get phone calls for new employment. This, when we understand these things, this goes beyond our intellect. Because now we're praying into the dimensions beyond our understanding of who he is. And here's the thing that I understand about God for all my people who, who need jobs and businesses and all this kind of stuff. This is the thing that I understand about God is he has a plan. God is never without a plan. The plan is already fulfilled. And so if I would just take a minute and I would begin to deal with the plan, the rearranging that doesn't make sense, favor is getting ready to hit my life because it's not about me. 
I understand I'm a part of your plan. Begin to pray like that. We talked about this last week. Begin to move like that with him. I understand I am a part of your plan. God, release your plan. I understand that where you would have me to be employed, it's a part of your plan. Pour me into your plan. Pour me into your plan. And give me wisdom. Give me wisdom to maneuver. Give me wisdom to understand your plan. And so now that means that some of us have to go back to our resume and those places that we put it in those and the jobs that we're lifting up to God saying, this is what I want. This is what I want. This is what I want. Wait a minute. Is this what you want? Is this the plan? Is this the plan? Is this it? Some phones are about to ring and the plan of God is going to be on the other side. God is never without a plan and you are never without direction. This is a mature word. But he said, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Then I'm going to pray into a righteous man's steps are ordered by the Lord. And so I'm going to pray into and praise into the ordering or the numbering. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Numbering has an order. I'm going to pray into the order of my footsteps, which is the providential will of God, not my will, not my ordering, not my numbering. Y'all see how this is not like, God, what's your plan? What's your plan? No, no. God, your plan. God, your plan. God, your plan. God, your plan. I'm only praying for the place I'm supposed to be. I only want to be in the place I'm supposed to be to do your will. I only want to be among the people that you want to reach in this season. That's it. The plan. Y'all see, this is a mature thing. This is a mature thing. And so that's when, are y'all seeing this? That's when things begin to happen and things begin to move out of just, you can't even, you begin to experience God. Because you and him are in agreement. You're not saying, oh God, what do you want me to do? I don't know what you want me to do. Y'all see how it's totally, what, I'm, what we're talking about is totally different. I don't know. I don't know. Give me clarity. No, 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 no. I'm saying to you, God, I only want to be and I only want to go in this season where you have already released me, where my steps are already numbered, where my steps are already ordered. Where the conversations are already, Jesus, written. Jesus. Yes, Shasta. Yes. Why? Because it's going to release his favor. That's, this is the easiest way for us to get the favor of God, the grace of God, and the glory of God. To tap into what is already written. All right, God, this is bigger than me. This is not what, ring, ring, ring. Right, God, I ain't never, I don't know. Ring, 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 will you? Ring, 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 yes. Ring, 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 yes. Y'all see this? Ring, 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 yes. Before, you would have maybe said, mm, I don't know if I can. I think that's beyond me. I don't know. But now you are okay, God. If this, is the affirmation of Jehovah for right now. We build. I ain't talking about no little stuff that you're going to be underneath. The, I'm talking about some Nehemiah. I'm talking about some Esther stuff. Where you're like, 
What you want me to do, Mordecai? Jesus. Is this making sense? So it's not that confused. I don't know. I don't know. What are you doing? No. Providential will of God. I'm a girl with no parents. I'm the only Hebrew chick in the harem. I'm the only Hebrew chick in the bunch. And you want me to do what? Okay, cool. I'll do that. I'm chosen. I pick. Life is good. Now you want me to do what? You want me to basically I could die? I don't know. All right, God. If this is what you want. If this is where we're at. Let's do it. Some of you guys, I'm hearing the Lord say, the phone hasn't rung for a job because he's up here and you're down here. And he's saying, I will not, I cannot, I must not. You must, you can, and you will. We are not in agreement. My glory has moved and you're not moving with me. I know that this was cool for the last five years, but I move. You're calling on me and I hear you. You're fasting and I see you. You're worshiping, I get it. But I am God, not you. And I cannot and I will not bend. I pray y'all see this. I pray y'all see this. The glory has moved. We're still muddling. We're still, still, the Father is saying, I have moved. And it's not going to make sense. Just last year, you were in the you were in Egypt, right? You were in Egypt. <laughs> and I'm talking to you who was born into slavery. I'm talking to you, you ain't got no degree. I'm talking to you, you ain't got no formal training. I'm talking to you, you ain't never painted nothing. I'm talking to you, you ain't never written nothing. I'm talking to you, you ain't never built nothing. The glory is moving. For I have prepared a land that flows with milk and honey. And I am taking you there. You will not take me where you want to go. I am God. Are y'all seeing this? Are y'all seeing this? And so I just believe over the next couple of days, I believe some of you guys tonight, you're getting ready to go into a place where you say, okay, God, for your glory, I would do anything, even come out of myself, come out of my smallness. And so, Father, we thank you for your word. And we say to you, for your glory, for your glory, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Ooh, that's a heavy word. It's a heavy word. Ooh, amen. Yep, for your glory. For your glory, 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 for your glory. If you take communion, when I get off of here, I'm taking communion. 
for your glory, for your glory. It doesn't have to make sense to me. You don't have to dumb it down for me, God. You ain't got to wait on me. I'm packing my tent. I see the glory. I see the glory moving. I'm packing my tent. What do you want me to do? Cool. I'm packing my tent. I'm going with the glory. Who am I supposed to be among? What am I supposed to be uh, uh, doing? That's where I want to be for your glory. I don't want to be behind you. I don't want to be ahead of you. I don't want to be on top of you. I don't want to be under you. I want to be in you for your glory, for your glory, for your glory, for your glory. So some, some things are getting ready to land in your lap and it's going to be bigger than you. It has to be bigger than you because this is a God thing. It's got to be bigger than you. It's got to stretch you. It's got to make you lean because I can't do this by myself. I say that every day, all day. Before I get on Periscope, I say to God, I can't, I can't do this by myself. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea how I should pray. I have no idea. I have no idea. But if this is what you want, if this is, if this is what, got to lean because this is y'all are bigger than just my one life your life is bigger than just my one your your lineage is bigger than just my one life your children your calling your purpose your mandate god i don't know what i'm doing because i don't want to play with your people i because i understand if i play with your people i'm playing with you i'm playing with you and so I don't know what I'm doing. I lean. I lean. It's making sense. No more excuses. Of course it's going to be bigger than you. Of course it's going to cause you to quake and shake. Because it's got to be God. And if it's not God, I don't want to do it. If it's something that I can do on my own. If it's something that I can contrive. If it's something that I can make up. I don't want to do it because it ain't God. If this is making sense. Jesus, I didn't mean to ugly cry. <laughs> right? Write the books and do this and do that. And it's like, God, I... You're not supposed to know what you're doing. David always inquired of the Lord. He was known as a man of war. And he always inquired of the Lord. Why? I don't know what I'm doing. And one wrong move. One time is all it takes. Amen. 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 So I love you guys. And I pray that you guys just really go there with your need meter, your need supplier. These next four weeks are going to blow your mind because God is going to literally reposition you. I love you guys. When you do this, you're getting ready to up. Hallelujah. All right. So I love you guys. We'll be on tomorrow. I may be a little bit later, but we'll be on. I'm going to try to make it back by seven. Um, so send your dreams. I love you guys. I love you guys. Good night.